just at the Maidun Pyramid here in Egypt for the first time. First time I've been here with Jim and Youssef and JJ and the crew. Um, and uh, you can, it's a huge site, it's much bigger than I thought, much bigger. There's also a chamber we're going to look at and also there's a master bar which has got some remarkable interior we're going to check out as well. And um, it's been linked with various pharaohs, Seneferu, it's supposed to be his third pyramid. Uh, in some reports, but there seems to be a much earlier phase, a megalithic phase, like we find at many other sites like Hawara here at Maidun. Maidun Pyramid is one of the oldest pyramids in Egypt. It's said to be the second pyramid built after Saqqara around 2700 2600 BC, or it could be slightly younger than that. Interestingly, originally it would have had the same shape as the Great Pyramid, but what we can see today is quite different. You can see in this image here that it's like a step pyramid between seven and eight layers, only about three you can really sit, still see today. But it would have had a casing over it, so it would have looked like a smooth classic style pyramid. Now we have this huge base on it as well, and it appears that there was like a sort of huge kind of platform there, which spread much wider than the original pyramid with a kind of step structure on top, which again later, according to archeologists, then it was like added to create smooth sides. But before we look at the pyramid itself, we're gonna go and have a look at Mastabar 17. Now this is a really interesting part of the site. It's a kind of supposedly a burial site, a burial area of the actual temple complex. And the interior is really, really interesting because on the outside it's kind of mud bricks, but on the inside we can see that it's quite different and it's actually quite unique. And the technology here, the stone carving quality is a whole different level to what we find in the main Maidun pyramid and on the exterior surface. If you look at the image here, you can actually see the smoothness of the stones. And this leads into this large T-shaped kind of chamber. There's many of these chambers all over the Maidun complex. And at the end of it, there's a really, really sophisticated stone carved sarcophagus with a great big lid, much like we find in the Serapeum or similar kind of tombs around the Giza Plateau. And this is a whole different quality to what we find anywhere else, but it's worth noting here as an anomaly. And you can see the carving there, the kind of um, Serapeum type lid we find here. But overall, Maidum's a very interesting site. It's a very unusual pyramid. The main pyramid is really made mainly of kind of limestone with very little other kind of stone within the structure itself, apart from what we find in these chambers in Mastabar 17 and a few others. So all over the Maidum complex, there are many, many structures. There are many kind of almost like hypergeum caves. Here we can see in the distance, many of the stones and even that village in the distance is actually made from these stones that came from the pyramid. Here we see the low, one of the lower levels, which you climb up to. This is actually in, just inside the corridor as you go down to the base or an, and an actual chamber, which is pretty much at ground level. But look at the quality of the stonework. It's a whole different level to what you see when you continue walking down the passage down to this um, chamber. Now, it's really interesting. So you have this really high quality at the first levels of the entrance, and then it gets worse. And the rest of the pyramid, it's kind of limestone. It's very neatly carved but lots of it's been damaged, um, it's been shattered. And when you actually get into the chamber itself, you realize there must have been more here. There's even suggestions, and I was talking to Yusuf Awian about this, who, who, who's in this video, and he suggests there may be many more chambers. So we've reached one level here, and we're about to climb up to the main chamber, the only one really that exists within the actual pyramid. You can see here. This is the natural bedrock, right here. Yeah, you can see it there. So that's actually there. And you can see some logs of wood that is brought from Lebanon. Original was the structure or ancient renovation. 
We find also the same one inside the bent pyramid, the higher chamber, which is mysterious to archaeologists. So as you climb up into the main chamber, you can see it's quite small compared to what you find, say, in the Red Pyramid or you find on the Giza Plateau. And it's like cobbled kind of roof coming inwards. Uh, it's quite neatly done. And you can even see the wooden beams there as well, which are still present actually inside this part of the structure. It has very interesting resonance. It has acoustic properties. But it really feels like there's much more to be found literally within this pyramid there's like could be many more chambers for a long time they related this one as well to Senefro but then they said no it might be for his father Huni and then Senefro completed there are no conclusive evidence around the whole thing yeah there are some hieroglyphs in the mortuary temple which we can see before we go to the Mastab. but there is more graffiti than hieroglyphs same like here until today, people can come here and scratch their names inside. So some of these were probably made last year. So we're just inside the chamber, inside the Maidun Pyramid. It's got the corbelled roof, which you can see just above me there. And this is something we find in most pyramids, actually. Uh, it's really intriguing. And this is like half in the bedrock, half in the pyramid. So it's like on ground level. And it, you know, where are the rest of the where are the rest of them? This is the only chamber, apparently, within the whole pyramid. Again, it's the old kingdom. Possibly the father of Sneferu, uh, or himself. No one really knows who it was for, or what it was for. But on the outside, you can see these seven steps, but actually it was a flat-faced, very high pyramid. In this chamber, what's also interesting is that not only can we see the beautiful corbelled roof and the way that these chambers are constructed in many of the pyramids, but there was actually a sarcophagus in here. However, when Flinders Petrie came in here in the late 1800s, the sarcophagus was actually a wooden one, and it wasn't very big, it wasn't impressive. But what we do find all over the whole plateau at Maidum is a number of chambers and even sarcophagi that are still present actually out on the sand, which you can still see today. So we're just heading back out now, heading back out to, uh, we're going up, so we're going back out to the main pyramid. And here we're gonna walk around to the eastern edge and we're gonna take a look at this quite unusual, almost seems unfinished mortuary temple, which unusually is on a side of the pyramid. We don't usually find it on this kind of eastern side, although there are elements of that on the Giza Plateau. And again, this appears to be unfinished. All the stones have been taken away. It doesn't look much from the outside, but it has huge megalithic slabs making up the lintels, the roof, and also some actually outside the back of it where we have like two huge uprights. There are even carvings on this particular wall, which Yusef's going to show us in a moment. Some of it dates back to the dynastic Egyptian time. You can see some of it here. Where is it? Where? Ah, you see? Here is a falcon here, you see it? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's in a black color. Mm -hmm. And the part of the symbol Nacht underneath it, the arm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. The symbol Beh. The symbol Nin. So it's ancient Egyptian graffiti. Yet, this is what academics depended on so they can get any information about the site which obviously is something that can be added later. But this is what dated the site to the third dynasty anyway. Here, there, there could be part of what we understand also as the false door, but had a different shape here because we have the hotib here, and usually the hotib is right in front of the false door. So again, this esoteric gateway that opens a channel between this world and the other world. If I think of those, I would think also resonance as well. 
What's a hotep? Hotep is this shape. This kind of like. Yeah. Hotep means peace, food. We have two of these on the eastern side, the Bente Pyramid, and they are bigger than that. And they both cracked, but they cracked while they are standing. And when I talked to uh, Susan Moore, the geologist, like, can the limestone just crack on its own like that? She said, of course not, unless one of the casing stone pieces fell and they break it. But these pieces were never, uh, like, they, they were not knocked down and then re-erected by the Master of Antiquities, no. So they just cracked on their own like that. So it seems like there was some kind of vibration that they couldn't handle. Mm -hmm. So that's why they break like this. They break on their location, but they never collapsed. Mm -hmm. Both of them, not one. Mm -hmm. All these shattered pieces, of course, is what's left from recycling. And usually the Ministry of Antiquities rebuilds with it so they can stop all this from falling and burying also all this was supposedly under the rubble just like that the entire temple and they cleaned it so they can of course do the excavation so you might just think that this entire casing stone that survived was under the rubble just like this and those who are recycling they didn't bother of course removing the rubble because it's a hard job so they can extract the stone so imagine the rubble that covered all this part of the pyramid is coming from what they extracted from above that. So imagine how much material was taken from this pyramid. And this stone is different than the other one inside, as you can see the difference in color. Yes. This is more iron, has more, it turned more red. This is more calcium carbonate, still white. So these stones above the mortuary temple are very impressive. These are large slabs like lintels going across the top. They look like they're at least 15 feet across in some cases. And, uh, and also the lintel there with the carvings on it. And if we go inside, you can't really see the lintels. There must be other layers above it. But again, we're seeing this precision stonework, which to me, this reminds me of the quality of the stonework we find in the king's chamber. But if we walk back out to the main area of May Doom, kind of in front of the pyramid, we find many of these sarcophagi. Now these are absolutely remarkable. Now these, you can see Anubis carved on this one. And these are just left out here. There's many of these have been found, beautifully carved, precision engineered. And no one knows really who did these. And these were often found in the chambers like Master Bar 17, kind of underneath the actual land. So again, we just see many of these kind of elements at Maydoom, which suggests there was a kind of earlier megalithic sarcophagus carving culture here, going back to the Old Kingdom or possibly before, even before the time of the first Pharaoh. We know that uh, we're finding, you know, elements of very sophisticated technology. And this is interesting because they're often under the ground. And it's also, we must look at the, the shape and size of this pyramid is really interesting because originally it would have had the same kind of ratios and dimensions. And it almost look, would have looked exactly like a smaller great pyramid. Like, so, so what is going on there? Was this a precursor? Was this like one of the ones they were building to kind of get used to how to design the Great Pyramid? It's almost like a practice run where they were building this huge platform with these kind of, um, you know, these towers on top and then building the actual flat sided pyramid around the edge. But overall, there's a lot to see here at Maydoom, and it really is a mystery because it doesn't seem like it was Snefru, it doesn't seem like it was his predecessor, it could be much older. And uh, to me, it has trademarks of the same builders as the Giza Plateau, although it looks like it was almost like abandoned, it was almost partly destroyed, whether that was to do with acoustics, whether that was just because of the construction, they got a bit wrong, these kind of things could be a possibility but when we're dealing with ancient Egypt we don't find that many mistakes we find precision engineered we find a real element of understanding architectural design and megalithic construction even deep under the ground as well as the pyramids up on the surface so we do hope you enjoyed this quick visit to Maydoom Pyramid, the Master Bar and the Mortuary Temple. I do recommend two excellent videos by Ben from Uncharted X 
uh, these are worth checking out he does a really thorough exploration of the, the whole landscape there the master bar inside the pyramid and everything else looking at the uh, reports the archaeological reports of flinders petrie who was a genius in my opinion and also he looks into the numbers and the specific geometry which are really present here there's a real strong evidence that they had a high understanding of sacred number science which was uh, incorporated into the design design not only of may doom but also the great pyramid so thanks for watching megalithomaniacs please subscribe please become a patron and please join us in ancient egypt we go back there every november and you can explore these amazing sites with us so once again thanks for watching and we'll see you next time